Hello and welcome back to our Planet Coaster Challenge Mode series. Uh, and in this episode we reach a huge milestone uh, and we get to change our rules up a little bit. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and bring those up. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, uh, one of the rules is uh, we can't use any uh, D oh, I don't remember if it's DLC or whatnot, but uh, we can't use any Theme Maker Toolkit items uh, well until we unlock everything else in game. So we do that in this episode because it takes so long, uh, and I put a lot of time on to uh, getting that all taken care of. So. Uh, we can go ahead and remove that rule completely, and we are free to use everything that we want. Uh, we certainly do that in this episode, so that is uh, pretty exciting. Uh, but anyway, back to what we are uh, working on here. Uh, we are building the logo for our roller coaster, our arrow roller coaster. Uh, and it is going to be called the Steel Eagle. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a, two, a 2D design, uh, so nothing too crazy. Uh, it, it does mess around with uh, these half, half circle pieces, uh, and then I just mess around with uh, where they're placed. And I think it came out wonderfully. Uh, it certainly took quite a bit of patience to get them all sorted out, but once I got it going, uh, it, it sped up tremendously and uh, you know the uh, the sun in the game and the, the reflection kind of makes it look a little weird right now uh, but when we zoom out uh, you can see it, it does it just looks so much better so yeah here we are uh, and you can see uh, I'm I, I mess with the research a lot during these time lapse because I was focused to try and get that done I knew we were close to it and uh, I wanted to make sure that we got that so we didn't violate any of the rules that we set up uh, and yeah so uh, th this piece there was definitely some uh, challenges with this logo and uh, I was using a reference image from the internet just a random logo and then I made some small minor changes to it so um, uh, one of the parts that was difficult was the uh, the head of the eel here and uh, it eventually came out well but we had to use like a circle piece uh, a non-flat piece to kind of get it to, to get the right shape uh, and you can see I'm starting to mess with it now and it's just not working out right uh, we eventually do figure it out, and uh, it looks pretty darn good. So, uh, yeah, uh, the Steel Eagle, you know, I, I was trying to keep that color scheme, that red-white uh, color scheme, and uh, the, the colors that are in here now, they are not the final colors. Uh, we do recolor it again to give it a little bit more, a little bit closer uh, look for... Uh, uh, the coaster itself and uh, yeah uh, it does have like a the the logo itself the eagle and turns steel uh, I believe uh, or like a grayish color uh, we do a little bit more research here uh, and you know we're pretty much done here uh, this is the, the logo went a lot faster than I expected uh, and uh, yeah, you can see it. at this point I realized, okay, uh, that we are most likely going to uh, to unlock everything. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, keep, let's go ahead and anticipate that we're going to do that. And then we just need to make sure that we do that. So, um, yeah, and uh, we sync it in. Uh, and it's still, it looks pretty good here, but uh, it's once we change the colors, it looks uh, even better here. Uh, and then uh, we duplicate it and put it a lot of different places. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I, I promise this is not the only thing for the episode. This is actually a pretty lengthy episode. Um, and you can see now I am 
going to change the colors here, uh, which uh, proved to be a little bit more of a uh, challenge than expected because uh, I couldn't see it. So now we're getting that steel color and that gray and then the yellow turns black and then we get uh, the black circle in here as the background and there we go. That is the final piece. The first thing we wanted to do uh, is, uh, wow, we moved the camera around a ton so I am sorry about that. Uh, and uh, it's get it up on the side of the coaster itself. So uh, we do it on both sides uh, and that looks great. And uh, then we wanna make sure that we can get the planter uh, set up here. I wanted this to be kind of like a focal point. So, uh, you know, when you walk into this area, uh, you know, this is going to be the main ride. Uh, even though you have crankshaft off to the left, which uh, looks like a pretty amazing ride, uh, and you have the scissor, uh, which is directly in front of you, the main ride is Steel Eagle. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I didn't like that I do here uh, after I do a whole bunch of research uh, it, with this planner is uh, I, I do get the, the poles in there, and I think that's fine. That looks good uh, in terms of a realistic aspect but uh uh and it's not the railings either but i add lights i add lights on the side and i don't really realize this until uh the live portion when uh I, the lights are really like a they obstruct some of the view and uh, that's not something that you would necessarily want uh in this uh there because it would be something that you take a picture at so uh, we do get a vista point in uh, which is nice but um yeah so here here we go we we duplicate some of the lights that we have around the area which i think is fine uh we just gonna find a way to not have them as part of this planner and maybe we make some bigger lights that uh that will shine onto that so uh we don't have anything obstructing the view maybe it's on top of one of the buildings off to the side so um yeah i think uh i think we're gonna have to do that in the next episode here uh we also this is about as much lighting as we do uh we don't really do anything else uh because then after that we go straight to the station for steel eagle and uh this turned out a whole lot better than i thought it was gonna uh, I'm really happy with the way this uh, turned out. Uh, you can see we got the uh, the plank wood, uh, painted plank wood, uh, as the base here, uh, as like uh, the main building material on the bottom. And then we use the uh, tile panels uh, as uh, like a uh, footer almost uh, to kind of simulate that. And, you know, I think it kind of gives a... It gives a little definition to the building. Uh, we also put another round of it uh, around the the station itself and use that as like a fence. Um, and then uh, we get a whole bunch of pillars that we throw around here. And uh, we actually use the wooden pillars. Like, I don't know what they're actually called in-game, but they're a little bit thicker. They kind of look like they're uh, metal, but they're considered wood in the game. Um, but I think they kind of fit really nice with the, the tile that we've used. And, uh, yeah, I think it turns out really nice. Uh, and, and this whole time that I'm building this, I'm like, how is this gonna, how's this gonna play out? And how's this gonna look decent? And how am I going to find a way to get this to work? Uh, and it just came together. Um, you can see I'm starting to mess around with some of the the pieces here. We do change the, uh, the entrance queue leading up to the station. Um, but nothing, nothing too crazy here. Um, we try and add quite a few borders just to, to give us some variation around. Uh, and those all turned out really nice. Uh, and these are those wooden beams that I was talking about. Those are We're going to use those for the pillars at some point here. Uh, I get sidetracked quite a bit. Uh, and uh, I start working on one thing and I move to the next without finishing the first one. Uh, but the good news is we come back and finish everything uh, that we work on with the exception of lighting. So 
Uh, and you can see I'm I'm trying to figure out what's going to work best for these pillars. Uh, and like I said, these just kind of seem that they make sense. And uh, we duplicate a ton of them uh, all over the place. Uh, they don't all perfectly line up, but I'm not super concerned about that either. Uh, and uh, you can see I even use them on the outside there uh, for the stairs leading up to the station. The initial idea was there was going to be an awning or a roof covering for the stairs and then I eventually forego that and that was the same for the uh, the exit ramp as well but uh, we forego those completely and just uh, kind of have them there as supports for the railings that we eventually put in. Um, from here it's just uh, adding uh, roofing and uh, we're going to do some custom roofing. We go with the same style roof that we used for Corky's Courtyard Barbecue uh, where we just use uh, scenery pieces and uh, color on what we want and then we have the fence. Uh, I don't even know what kind of fence it is but you'll, you'll see it. Uh, we turn it sideways and it kind of looks like the uh, the metal ridges that run vertically for uh, on these roofs so I think it turns out really well it was a really simple roof to make uh, unlike Corky's Courtyard barbecue because this one is uh, pretty generic uh, we also have uh, two different elevations on the roof so uh, the entrance side has a 2 2 H steep steepness one pound pitch I don't know what you would call that uh, and then the other side has a 1 H uh, pitch and uh, we uh, connect them with uh, some glass panels uh, that kind of give it just enough variation that it doesn't look uh, super repetitive um, but like I said we uh, go through and do a whole bunch of things that I'm not even talking about uh, we've added a railing topper uh, to the panel pieces uh, which looks nice uh, and then uh, we come back and now I think we're gonna start yeah so there we go now we're on to the roof um, and there's really no rhyme or reason why I do this I just think the roof looks pretty good I think it's a good uh, it, it looks like a metal roof which I like uh, for this style build I think you would see something like that where they want it to look nice, but they also want it to be durable, and uh, I think you would see that for a coaster like this. Uh, and the other problem that I had to solve with the roof was how is it going to look once it's uh, once it's in? Like, is it just going to float? Like, if it were to rain, if it's just going to throw all the water out? Uh, and I didn't think that was a good idea, so we go ahead and we had like a little, uh, I don't know what it is. I guess you would call this, like it would be a trough for rainwater so it catches it so it doesn't just automatically spill out onto the pathway or anything like that. But we do it for the entire thing, uh, and it kind of adds like a trim uh, for the entire building. Uh, just another layer of detail and you can see we haven't even done the the vertical fence pieces yet so uh, yeah I was all over the place with this build and uh, yeah now we're gonna go and do the windows uh, for whatever reason I thought that was a good idea now uh, yeah it's really interesting how uh, this is all all playing out here so uh, yeah uh, the windows I wasn't fully sure how that was gonna play out but I, uh, I get pushing through it and I did that a lot in this episode where I just started building and just kept going and uh, just hope that I would get there at some point and uh, I eventually do and you know the the window up here and we use the wooden beams to look as like a uh, a border or a uh, I don't know what the word is to call them but I uh, I think it makes it look nice 
uh, it hides any of the imperfections with the glass. And then uh, here are the fences that we use. And yeah, like I said, this was a super easy thing for, for me to do. And uh, it didn't take very long. And the one nice thing is since it was so easy, I can do the other side just as well. And, uh, and then yeah, I, I just need to worry about what it was going to look like underneath. Uh, which I said to myself, I was like, you know what, I don't really feel like doing a lot in the station here. Um, so let's just go ahead and let's just duplicate the uh, uh, these pieces and just kind of sink them in. So now you can see uh, on both ends. Uh, and I think that would be, I think it's believable enough. Uh, we do sink the roof down a little bit, uh, just because I thought it was a little bit too tall. And then, uh, we add some side pieces, uh, side trim, if you will, uh, to the roof. And, uh, of course we have to stick with the same type of, uh, uh style as the other part of the roof. And, uh, I think it looks good. I, I think it, it doesn't look, uh, out of place here at all. Uh, of course, Planet Coaster was fighting me a little bit in terms of what I needed uh, or how I needed to duplicate pieces. Uh, so I had to do a few things manually, which was a little bit annoying, but generally uh, it worked pretty well for me. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, we go ahead and then we can just duplicate everything, uh, kind of send it over to the other side. Uh, and uh, do the same thing to the trim pieces and you can see it was a little off but it was good enough so I wasn't too concerned about it. Um, next part uh, is uh, how are we gonna work with these pillars and uh, some of the piece, some of the pillars I wanted to come up a little bit higher uh, some needed to be a little bit lower and we eventually find out that uh, we don't want to work on that so we just go and we pull out some more uh, shapes and we add a topper layer to some of the panel pieces uh, that are not in the station so uh, this uh, I did not expect to look as good as it did and uh, looked very believable uh, and then we just needed to get in some more of the trim with the wooden pillar uh, for the bottom uh, where the path is and uh yeah yeah it's honestly it looks very it looks really good compared to what i thought it was going to uh and then uh we add our trim pieces all the way around here <laughs> and uh yeah you can see i'm looking at different options uh to see if i can find any type of pull for this railing and, uh, you know, we had to use the racing pole. Uh, they're a little bit thicker than what I would have liked, but, you know, I think they're believable. So, uh, we just go ahead and get those in there, uh, shrink down the pillars, because we weren't doing the roof anymore, and uh, that all looks good. We also add in a, another logo for Steel Eagle, uh, which this one does not stay. We end up moving this one, uh, although... I'm not opposed to potentially switching that back, but uh, for this video, it, stay, it, it does get moved out of there. So um, from there, we go back to finishing off the, uh, the topper for the panels here at the bottom. And uh, there's a lot of them. So, uh, and uh, they're little pieces. So that's a little bit annoying, but we get it all done. Uh, and then, we sit here and try and figure out how this pathing works, and then I figure I realize that oh, I have flattened terrain on, um, and uh, we finally get it to work the way I want it to. Um, that way, we can kind of hide things a little bit better. Uh, but we we do get a, get it all set up finally. Uh, we marvel at. Well, I will marvel at the work a little bit uh, in game and then uh, we switch the trim to be a little bit different for this because uh, I need to hide some more stuff so 
Uh, we do that and we also throw it in on the inside to hide a little bit of the uh, the air, not necessarily errors but things that were not being covered there uh, and that works pretty nice uh, I finish up the border on the inside panels <coughs> which is uh, which is nice and then uh, one of the things that I was worried about was how am I going to make the top corner uh, leading into the station how am I going to make that blend in enough that you don't really see it well the answer to that is just to add in uh, some concrete uh, as the pathway and uh, we eventually do that here in a second uh, but we have a few more things that we uh, need to just tidy up in terms of this corner before we do that and then there we go so we get that in there so it kind of hides the uh, hole that's actually there uh, and then I said you know what this doesn't look too bad if we uh, just make this whole top thing concrete because that would be something that they would do for a coaster like this uh, so we certainly do that. Uh, we flip it over and get it on the other side as well. Uh, and like I said, it, I wasn't initially intending to do this, but it actually kind of worked out really nice. So, uh, yeah, we went with it. Uh, and uh, now I'm just kind of trying to plan out what am I going to do. Uh, double check uh, how the park is actually doing, but... Uh, you can see we we have plenty of money at this point, uh, and there was a point after the logo that was complete that we were a little bit hurting on money. Uh, we had to run the game a little bit, so uh, that explains why we're a little bit further ahead in terms of our years. Uh, but once we got past that, now we make a ton of money all the time. So. <clears throat> Uh, the next thing that I really wanted to focus on was the transfer track, and this transfer track would not get a lot of attention uh, in terms from the park. Uh, they wouldn't really care too much about it. Uh, they would obviously want it to look clean, but they're not really going to try and hide it. Uh, it's literally just there for storage of trains when not in use, uh, as well as a purpose to get the, via the trains off of the track for maintenance. Uh, which you'll see how we do that here in a little bit because we completely remodel how this uh, this layout works and uh, I, as much as I kept trying to do what you just saw where I made the turns that way it did not work uh, we had to come back and do a complete U-turn to get them to be exactly where they were supposed to be so uh, we get the piece and you know this is also um, this is a good trick to know if you've ever tried to do a transfer track obviously they don't work but um, if you do a transfer track and you use a separate coaster it's going to continuously hit you with a notification that says coaster incomplete and that drives me up a wall um, so I found out that if you use the actual coaster that it is intended to be a transfer track for uh, and that coaster completes its circuit, even though it doesn't go on the other pieces of track, it won't give you that notification. Um, so you can see that's why I stopped, I turned off, I closed the coaster, rebuilt it, and added uh, the transfer track that you currently see there. Um, the other reason I needed to rebuild it was to make sure that uh, we were going to have enough room between the coaster and the queue. To uh, have the full slide deck uh, there uh, because uh, it is tight uh, and at one point I thought you know what maybe I will close this in and put a, a roof over it uh, but that doesn't last too long and I eventually end up getting all of those out of there uh, because I just didn't think it worked right or it looked right so um, <clears throat> yeah uh, you can see I'm really messing around with it uh, I do decide to uh, kind of copy the station a little bit uh, in terms of uh, these pieces on top of the white the panels, and uh, I think that turned out really nice. Uh, even though we do get rid of the the wooden pieces in the middle there, <clears throat> it does uh, really kind of show the wall uh, for the barrier. Uh, 
and uh, we constantly change the, the leveling on it because uh, we want it to be right up against the ground. We don't want it to be anything anything more than that. Uh, we also didn't want those, uh, those foundation pieces to be that large or that high above either because we wanted to put these fences up here. So um, we go ahead and we get some pillars in here. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy at this point. Um, we do duplicate the fences around. We also add in uh, uh, some of the street lamps that you see that we put around the uh, the border of the coaster uh, fence. Uh, so they kind of fit in pretty nicely. Um, which those I that's probably that's really the only lighting that I do in this episode, other than the, the lights that I want to remove from that planter earlier. Uh, uh, and that was just because they, they kind of fit right where they're supposed to go. And I was like, you know what, this will look better if I do it. So um, we do add in some display sequencers just to kind of show uh, it, this would be the panel to move the track. Uh, and then we also add in some iron beams uh, with some rails on the top because uh, these would that would be where the, the track rolls from. Uh, we get some footers in there to where the uh, the tracks would sit when there when there's one track that's set up so uh, we could just kind of move it around as much as we wanted and uh, the, any train could just sit anywhere on the uh, the transfer track there so uh, we get that in we add in some wires just for a little bit more realism uh, nothing too crazy here uh, I don't want to I don't want to go so far in that uh, we're going to start to bog the computer down before we get anything good in this park. So, um, yeah, we get it all, all set in here. Uh, we have to do some re-leveling for some of the concrete to avoid some glitching. And, uh, yeah, the transfer track is uh, pretty much done. Uh, and now for... Uh, maybe... Oh, we, uh, we have to make a fence, or a, uh, a gate for people to be able to get in on this side. Uh, the other side, uh, where the uh, the track exits and transfer for like, uh, to get the vehicles off, uh, we would consider that like the gate on that side. So uh, this I think turned out really nice, uh, where it just be a really nice and tall gate uh, that we have there. So <clears throat> here we go. Now the transfer track, I believe is 100% complete. Uh, so now uh, I'm really putting off doing the queue because I didn't really want to do the queue. I think that's probably the most annoying part that I had to do, but it was definitely necessary. We definitely get it done at some point. But now we're trying to put like a, a little housing unit here that would be for the chain uh, motor. Uh, so we use the same type of uh, idea uh, you're not obvi you're obviously not gonna be able to see into this one at all uh, and it's a very tiny chain house or a uh, motor house or whatever you want to call it uh, we do get some vents in there we get a small door uh, on the one side that's gonna be blocked off from uh, the guests and then uh, we try and figure out what would be a, what would look good as a a uh, chain return uh, that we could just have going into this building and uh, I sit here and I think about this a lot and uh, I eventually just use the railroad rail and uh, <clears throat> it sucks because it's not recolorable so it's got that steel look all the time but we are called Steel Eagle so I didn't think it was that bad of a, a thing to have here. So uh, we eventually find a way uh, to work this around. And it, it does take a little bit for me to, to actually figure out how we're going to get it. But uh, we do get it. And uh, it all tends to look pretty good. Um, so what we're doing now, I'm going to take a quick sip of my water. Uh, and hopefully I don't have to cough through this. Uh, 
So yeah, so this, uh, while we're doing that, th this episode was actually supposed to come out in December, but due to uh, some challenges uh, that I had, I, I had to deal with the sickness, and <clears throat> we still have that to, to some extent, but, uh, you know, dealing with that, uh, as well as the holidays, uh, I just wasn't able to quite get the content done, which is why you're having this video now early in January. I am going to try and get a second video for January. Um, maybe it won't be quite as long, uh, but I do want to try and get another one. Uh, in the worst case scenario, we'll just have another video in February. Um, but uh, I, as long as I don't have any more unexpected sicknesses or anything like that, uh, we should be good to get another video out here before the end of the month. Uh, and uh, yeah so now another piece uh like i said something that i just wasn't really interested in doing but i knew it had to be done uh we had to get some of our don't die fencing up uh and then uh trying to figure out where am i going to put this gate that leads to the chain lift hill because uh, you obviously don't want guests to get that way either so uh and this is all going to be tarmac um so, uh, it's something that easily, yeah, and you can see I've already done it now. Uh, unfortunately, I failed to record portion of uh, the building, so um, you can see I already have some concrete pads down there, uh, so I apologize for that. Fortunately, I didn't record all that much. It didn't take me all that long to do that. Um, but we, uh, we pick up here where uh, I'm moving that fence that we just placed. Uh, we also don't want people climbing on the top of this building since it's got that uh, very sh sharp roof there. And then uh, it's all about putting don't die fence in. <laughs> all the way through here, uh, we get it to come out through the front uh, and all the way around and uh, right up to uh, the building there. <laughs> and then uh, we just need to... Uh, Finish it up on the other side, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't take all that long. And then the one part that I was really worried about, the concrete for the queue itself. Uh, I wasn't sure how this was going to work, and I ended up saying, you know what? Oh, we do fencing first. I forgot about this. Uh, we try and get the fencing in. Uh, we wanted to be a little bit consistent with uh, that red and white. Uh, but we also stay with uh, those red fences. We flip them on their side to use them to signify that's the gate for the area. Um, but yeah, I wanted to try and keep it so it looked reasonably realistic. Uh, and honestly, it turns out pretty decent. Uh, we end up uh, having this one piece that goes all the way down here. And uh, it does have a little kink in it at one point, but nothing too crazy. Uh, we, uh, yeah, once we got it down to the end there, we did have to change the, the ground a little bit so we could see where the queue was. And then uh, from here, it's just getting our concrete pad in. And yes, I, this is quickly becoming one of my least favorite things to do. Uh, is trying to get the floor coverings on here. Uh, also, I don't know what I did to the terrain here, but there was some type of random bump uh, underneath the, tr the coaster, and I couldn't figure out why or how it got there. Uh, and the path was already down, and I didn't want to mess with the path, so it stays. We just cover it up. You can't really even see it. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, <clears throat> And then uh, using these huge concrete pads to uh, to cover up the la last bits. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to uh, keep that as tarmac in the middle there. So uh, and so we just fill it in easy enough. Uh, we do add a few uh, umbrellas just to give a little bit of a break to the people in line and then uh, we have to finish off the uh, the concrete pad here uh, which is actually going to lead to another piece that I really wasn't sure how I needed to build it 
I didn't really think about the placement of it either. Uh, those bathrooms are going to be in everyone's photo of this ride, which is somewhat hilarious uh, that you take a photo, you're going to see the bathroom. Uh, it's almost kind of like Sky Rush at Hershey Park. Uh, there's a bathroom in that building, but they it blends in enough that you don't notice it, and there's no huge restroom sign like you're going to see <laughs> there is here. So, yeah, let me uh, grab another quick drink of my beverage. Ah, <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, the restroom building here, uh, it has a first date in it. It has an ATM. And I wanted to make sure that we incorporate that, um, but those are not the main things for this building. Uh, obviously, when you're walking around the theme park, you don't see giant signs that say first date on them or uh, anything like that. You'll definitely see some signs or you can locate them, but uh, they're not the main focus of any of this. So uh, the restroom is going to be the main focus for this. We have two of them in there. Uh, the ATM is also in there. Uh, and then uh, the concept is the back portion behind the first aid building. Uh, that would be where the first aid is. This would be like the home base for first aid. Um, it can either have offices or whatever you want to envision would be in there. We don't put anything in there. We leave that blank because that's not important to us. Uh, we do get, uh, uh, we do want to keep, uh, make this building a little bit different than all the other ones. So we have the windows at the top that would let light in, um, but they would be uh, like that frosted glass so you can't see in but you, it will let light in can't see out uh, and things like that and uh, I do it around the whole thing because why not uh, I have nothing better to put around there uh, I do put the restroom sign up here but we do change that a little bit we also uh, recenter it uh, a little bit uh, you can see it just kind of sticks out a little bit. Uh, we didn't, want, like I said, we did want to have the restroom and the first aid signs, uh, which we do. We get the restrooms in there, or the ATM sign in there. We make sure those are assigned so they actually draw people into them, which is nice. And then we want to copy the roof from the station um, as close as we could. And uh, as I was doing it, I was like, why? Why am I making this more difficult? Why am I trying to make it so it has this small little uh, angled roof here on the end? We don't really need that. We can just put it over and finish it off and then put a little end cap on it and we'll be fine. So uh, we eventually do that, but you now we focus on the big roof first uh, because uh, I think that's a little bit, it was a little bit more important at the time. So, uh, or it made a little bit more sense. Uh, and the more I did these roofs, the better they got. Uh, but, uh, of course, in the nature of this episode, I get distracted because I didn't want to do it. Uh, I moved the entrance sign out, or the restroom sign out a little bit. And then, uh, we finally get back in to do the, uh, the roof here. Uh, and for whatever reason, I chose to, uh, duplicate it and swing it around that way. We get that all taken care of. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we get it down here, and it's at this point where I'm like, why am I making this so difficult? Let's just, let's just leave the roof out. We'll put a little end cap, like I said, and that'll be it. And there we go. So the roof uh, is done. Now I just have to worry about the sides and the uh, trims on the side, uh, which... I'm not a big fan of the trim, but uh, I think it fits in well with the building at the end. Uh, and it makes it look different enough. So uh, we do reverse the colors a little bit compared to the, uh, uh, what's it called? The station. Uh, and then uh, this roof, uh, that, that gets changed. Uh, that was just a temporary thing that was actually a little bit like uh, the admin first aid building that we had in our first park the mostly average park uh, which uh, if you're looking for a series that's got quite a few episodes uh, before uh, I lost that park on my old PC so uh, 
yeah, you might want to go check that out if uh, you're looking for more content to watch. Um, and that is a that is linked in the description as well. So uh, I ha think I have it listed as the old PC. Um, but we had a building, we had an admin building right at the entrance of the park. Uh, I don't remember how many episodes in. It's pretty far in though. Uh, and I had some custom roofing on that as well and kind of had something similar to that. So uh, we get our pillars in here. Nothing too fancy. Uh, yeah. Really, that's, that's all we're doing at this point. And then... <clears throat> Uh, the other part that I was worried about, uh, other than doing this trim that I'm now, uh, fixing up, uh, above the restroom sign, which, uh, we modify slightly here. We just kind of move that down a little bit and add some more, uh, of the white to, uh, balance it out. And, yeah. We do sink that gray piece down, which makes it look a little bit better. Uh, and then the other part, I didn't know what to do with this trim. So we just wing it and it turns out pretty decent. It's not something that's super ugly to look at. So I think that's a win. Uh, if it is ugly, let me know and I'll try and change it, but we're probably done with this. So, um, I'm going to grab another quick drink of my beverage. And uh, you might be noticing me doing that a little bit more frequently here because uh, I can feel a cough coming and I don't want to cough into the mic for you guys. Uh, and uh, I'm not that good at editing, so uh, I can't edit that out. I probably could cut it out, but I don't want to do that. That's That would mess up the sound and everything for the video. So uh, maybe one, I don't know. I don't want to have to deal with it though. Uh, so yeah, so... Uh, this trim annoyed me. Uh, there were a lot of things that it would not do for me. Uh, so I just for forced it my own way and uh, it eventually worked. So uh, uh, I'm not going to complain too much about it. Uh, and because it was so annoying, I duplicated it and, that's, and then uh, get it all set up here. And thankfully it worked. And, yeah, we are uh, quickly finishing up this building. The next piece uh, I think we have to worry about is, uh, oh, uh, our topper piece is here. We can quickly do that, and that doesn't take too long. Uh, and then in the front, I was like, well, how am I going to make this so that it's not just a flat facade? Um, so uh, we continue the planters out in front, which add a little bit of variation and depth to the building. Uh, which is nice. Uh, we do sink it a little bit. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and then we also add in this, uh, this fence, which would lead you into the ride area for Steel Eagle, uh, which that's going to play a role in a future episode, uh, but we're pretty far away from that one, so, uh, yeah. Uh, once we get that in, I needed something to uh, break up the uh, the wall there, and there would be windows there because it's a bathroom, so that would be something that's just a wall, so we just need to cover that up with some greenery. Uh, we sink the trees in so we don't have it be too tall, because uh, I don't want that to stick out. That would kind of stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, and then we get some windows around the first aid area which wouldn't necessarily be something that you would see either, but not super concerned about it. Uh, they could cover it up if necessary. Uh, this part in the back, though, I really didn't know what to do with it. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than what I would have liked. I didn't want to just block it off and leave it as tarmac. I thought that would look weird. So we do add a, uh, a planter here. We do make it so that it's a, uh, a, a planner with uh, the concrete covers on it uh, and then we add our tallest tree to the build um, but again I sink it in pretty deep so it's not 
super, it, it's not super obtrusive, it's just a tree that's in the back. Uh, probably not something that you would see there, but I needed something to break it up. And uh, this ash tree, I think uh, it doesn't go too much taller than the building itself, so I'm pretty happy with the way it turns out. Uh, if you have any suggestions for, for that area, let me know. Uh, you can see I do reposition the sign and I remove the sign on the other side, uh, which that's, like I said, that's probably the humorous part because you take a picture and now you're forced to see the bathroom in the background. You probably won't know what it is, but it is pretty funny. Uh, we do get the, uh, the concrete pad in here uh, over for the restroom uh, and then uh, just adding in a few more pillars just to kind of tidy up a little bit in the inside. Uh, we do add a, a yellowish roof on the inside uh, and that definitely doesn't look as good as I thought it would uh, but you don't see it so I'm not real concerned about it. Uh, we get some vents in the top uh, all over the place for the bathroom. We do add air conditioning units around the back here which I thought was a good idea. And uh, we co uh, fence them off, which is nice. And yeah, uh, we do realize we have to, uh, we've missed this area. Uh, so we just throw a fence in there because there's not really much else we can do. Uh, and then we do a tiny bit inside the station here, just to make it believable. Uh, we got uh, our row numbers up above the rows, uh, which, looks fine nothing too crazy there and then on the exit side we put uh, arrows with the exit word so people know where to go once they get off but that is going to do it for this time lapse so I will see you in the live portion hello and uh, welcome to the live portion of today's video and I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. I am certainly proud of what we have so far. You are looking at our brand new station for uh, uh, Steel Eagle, which we have now named. Uh, now, one thing I didn't do, I didn't do any lighting in this episode, so we'll have to come back and touch that up. Uh, but, you know, I think I have enough content here. Uh, I think it's already going to be a pretty long episode. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, first thing that we worked on, let's kind of zoom out here, is the Steel Eagle logo. Uh, and you can see we kind of finished up this area where we kind of put those in. Uh, not a huge fan of the lights here, so uh, we might get rid of those and find another way to put those in there. But, uh... I huge love the way the, the logo turned out. I think it looks really cool. Uh, this is a little odd here, but you, know, you have to do with what the game gives you. Uh, we did elevate the word steel uh, for this logo specifically, so uh, when you're down here, you get a little bit better uh, angle at it. You can also see the logo is up there. It is all over the place here. If you take a picture here, you get it on the picture a lot. Um, from there, we went into uh, building our station. I kind of wanted to have this like a uh, kind of an old-fashioned style station. Uh, it's got the eagle, which represents uh, the, main, the main animal for uh, America and all that stuff. So I want to get those colors in here with the red, white, and the blue. And then we, uh, sorry. We got the uh, the metal roofing, which is something that you'd potentially see here, which we duplicated around a little bit. Uh, we also got some uh, windows up here to kind of keep it uh, broken up a little bit so it's not just a boring roof up there. Uh, I was debating about putting the Steel Eagle name up there, not the logo, but I decided against it in the end, so... Uh, yeah, I think it looks fine. We also uh, added a whole bunch of concrete in here. We got exit signs uh, with arrows pointing down to the exit. We got the row numbers all in here. Uh, really a pretty half-assed job uh, for the station here. I didn't want to go into too much detail. I don't think it was that important. So uh, we do get all that stuff in here. And then uh, the queue 
we kind of made our way down here. Uh, we get a lot of concrete. Uh, so the idea is kind of like a Great American Screen Machines keywords. Uh, you certainly have some spots where there's some cattle pen in it, but uh, the uh, excess where the queue isn't, it's actually like a, it was a gravel. It's not there anymore, but uh, it was a gravel, and uh, they only had like little concrete pads where the path was, so we kind of go with that. We also got our transfer track area, which I had to redo the track a little bit. Uh, this actually, I think, came out really good with the exception of this. I did not see that. Whatever. We're just going to pretend I didn't see it. Uh, we also got this area of the track that comes out here, which we'll do in a future episode. Uh, we got a gate in here. Uh, this would be also be an access area. Um, and you can see we got the rails where we kind of push it over, line up with the track, and then get the next train in. We also got the... Uh, drive tires to make that a little bit more realistic. Uh, and then as we come down through here, uh, we got uh, a little house that would have the uh, a, an engine or motor or whatever it is for the chain. Uh, and then we pretend the uh, rails here are the uh, casing for the chain to give it a little, or a guide rail for the, uh, the chain uh, and the return chain. Uh, which, uh, yeah, I wish I could change it to white, but I can't, so, uh, we just go with what we have there. Uh, coming through here, we get, found some ways to, to put in, uh, some umbrellas just to kind of break up the space. And then, uh, we got some more concrete padding. A, uh, custom ladder that you'd use to get up onto this portion. It wasn't anything huge, so I figured just a, a set of sideway fence would do the job uh, for that. And then we got the rest of our queue that comes all the way down here. A few more umbrellas, things to, uh, it, like the park would have realized that, hey, there's a whole lot of uh, concrete, not a lot of shade, so let's just throw in an umbrella here and there. Uh, and then the path that goes underneath uh, the, the coaster here, um, I probably should have done some type of cover there, but I didn't, so it's fine. Uh, maybe I'll do that in the future. Uh, but it is a little bit wider, and in this area I really didn't know what to do with. We got this building here for the restroom. Uh, there's nothing going on over here, uh, but I figured, you know what, it's probably good. We could just kind of put the concrete pad in here, say, uh, you got the the gate here that leads into the rest of the ride area and then uh, you got the air conditioning units that they would fence off here and uh, looks good I uh, kind of bring our concrete pad around here uh, still some more dead space I didn't really know what to do with behind the sign here but I think the sign hides it pretty well uh, and I did have the sign originally here but I do think it's a little bit better here because now you can uh, get the bathroom in the background, which I did not plan out very well, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, our bathroom building, we put quite a bit of time into that. Uh, we kind of modeled it after the uh, the station here for Steel Eagle. Um, but like I said, it's just a restroom. Uh, we changed up the colors a little bit. We gave it a little bit more design on the roof. Gave it a little bit more design on the roof. We also added these uh, windows that would be around the top, just to kind of let light in to the bathroom, so uh, it all looks good. Uh, we do get one tree in the back, just to uh, kind of fill in a little bit of uh, space that I didn't know what to do with, and then we got a few trees up front uh, that just kind of break up the monotony of what this building could potentially be. Uh, and, yeah, we've got our first aid here. Uh, we've got an ATM, and you have a uh, bathroom to the right, the bathroom to the left, a uh, little fancy roof in here, and uh, the idea would be this back portion here would be like the first aid area, so you'd kind of walk in down a hallway, and that's whatever they would need to do there. Uh, the other part, we just needed to uh, add a gate here, which we made a nice and large gate uh, to get into this area in case they need to really move stuff around, and yeah. Uh, filling in some of the, the concrete, adding some of the benches, and uh, 
you know, this is, this area is pretty much done, aside from uh, some of the lighting that we need to do. So, um, yeah, I really, really like the way this is looking. Uh, I wish we didn't have some of that glitch there, but, you know, listen, it is what it is. Uh, it's honestly not too bad of a, a look there. So, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the uh, building portion of this. Uh, this was uh, a tedious piece for me. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to move, uh, get another video out quicker here. Uh, but we got some backstage stuff that we, we need to do. We need to take care of our entrance and whatnot. So uh, we're getting ever so close to uh, building a new attraction. But uh, we're not quite there yet. we still got a few more episodes before we do that. Uh, the good news is we have researched all of our stuff, which I'm sure I mentioned uh, in the time lapse, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into our management features. Uh, and uh, our overview, we're looking pretty good. We got happiness at 98%. The root only thing is people don't want to queue for scissors that long. Uh, and yes, that's a long, long line, so, uh, we might need to take a look at that. Uh, our most profitable ride is Crankshaft, which is good. Uh, I feel like that's going to change here, uh, once we get, uh, Steel Eagle open. Our most profitable shop is Looney Bloons, uh, which we can rename that now. Uh, and most popular attraction, yes. All of that good stuff. So we are looking good. We are making money by the boatloads now. Uh, so really not too much to uh, report in here. Uh, just our ride and ticket sales, our coaster sales. Once we open that up, we are going to make a ton of money. Uh, our shops, we're even uh, breaking even there, which is good. And then our park management, we're obviously losing a ton of money. So uh, that is good. Uh, and at research, we completed the research. I've already talked about that, so we won't go into that. Uh, no marketing. Uh, our staff, uh, honestly, we are looking pretty good there. Uh, and actually, Goku over 9,000. Let's go ahead and train you up here. Uh, we will also train up Reyna. Uh, whoa, not that much. Uh, and then, yeah, we got uh, Nocturo. Uh, we'll get Nocturo trained up here. So, uh, if you are looking to become a part of the channel, please let me know in the comment section if you want to work for the park. You can let me know which section you want to work in, uh, which if you want to be a specific character or something like that. And I can go ahead and get you in here. Uh, I do mention most of the names every single episode, not all the time, but uh, most of the time. So uh, make sure you let me know in the comment section who you want to be, and I'll certainly get you in here. Uh, our guest groups, uh, all this is looking pretty good, nothing to report here. Our attractions, and ooh, excuse me for one second, I have to step away, I'll be right back. Alright, so we are back here. So, uh, yeah, our attractions, uh, where are we? The American Arrow, we can go ahead and update this now to be the Steel Eagle. We'll go ahead and get that open, and, uh, I know that's already, uh, I'm pretty sure that that is maxed out here. Uh, oh, maybe it's not. Uh, we should be able to, uh, max that out here. Uh, let me see here. So, 1208. Yeah, we're gonna easily be able to, uh, max out at, uh, the $20.00. Uh, for the coaster, so that is good news there, so we are going to make a ton of money, uh, and that should be the most popular attraction now in the park, uh, it's definitely got the highest prestige, uh, so we are good with that, uh, Scissor has pretty good prestige as well, which is pretty interesting, um, 
Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, nothing else for any of the others, that's fine. We still got Wild Blue and the Whirly Rig in here, uh, which we'll have to address that at some point. Uh, Looney Bloons, uh, we're just going to call this the Steel Eagle Gift Shop. Uh, and then uh, for... my sake, uh, I'm gonna, oh, uh, let's just go, we'll go with LB, that way I know that it's the Looney Bloons, uh, so we're good there, uh, I don't like that this is unstaffed, but, uh, I don't think that's too much of a concern, uh, and actually, let's just take a quick gander, so we got, Three, four. Hmm. So maybe it's time that we uh, add one more. Let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, I didn't think we'd have to, but uh, you know, I think we're gonna be making so much money that it doesn't matter. Uh, now, one thing that we need to do is uh, go to our vendors here. All right, let's go to Newton Malone. And what are you? Okay, so we got that, that, and then we get pink, and then we get that color. Okay, and you are going Preferred shop assignment. Can I select two? No. Nope. Uh, well, let's do this one. Dinky -dinky. Uh, that's fine. These guys can fight over that. Uh, they're 85 and see what happens. And I'm going to finish getting her all set up here. There we go. All right, welcome to the team, Daphne. Uh, so that should solve that problem that we have. Uh, what else do we have? Everything's good there. We got everything back open because we're making a ton of money now. Uh, we can actually probably let's see here. Let's go steel. Mushroom. One. And what's this one? Perfect. Steel. Universal. Two. Alright. Steel Eagle. ATM. And we will have the Steel Eagle First Aid. So there we go. So that is good. Uh, that dash is in there. Actually, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that out of there. So there we go. Now we have that. We have. Oh, that's just a random one at the front. Okay. So that's all good. A uh, small attraction. Uh, yes, this is... There we go. No hotels, no restaurants. Nothing like that. Uh, security. Not super... Uh, 
worried about that. We're going to go ahead and get some uh, uh, cameras here in a future episode, uh, which isn't too far away either. Uh, we got some display sequencers. Okay, so this one... in here, and I thought there was another one in here somewhere that I had. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe I didn't put it in. Okay. Anyway, uh, so I think that's gonna do it. Uh, I think we are all done for this episode. Uh, you can just see the people flying in here. Uh, we do have a priority pass set up and ready uh, but that's not, we're not there yet, so, uh, we got a few more, uh, we got a while, actually, until we get priority passes in here, but for now, this will do, so I do hope you enjoyed the episode, if you did, make sure to leave a like, if you saw something I could have done better, let me know in the comment section, and if you want to see some more awesome Planet Coaster content, please subscribe to the channel. So again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Later.